Hello and welcome to our next painting session. So this is the composition we're going to do today and you can see I have three white flowers uh, in the middle of the composition. Now that said, middle, let's not put them exactly in the middle because you can see that I've got less space at the top and a bit more space at the bottom. I've got three quite irregular shaped flowers with very dark centres. Let's assume they're anemones. And the important thing with this one is to make sure that some part of your flower touches the edge of your frame. Um, another important thing to remember is paint over your frame. I've masked this one off so you can't see where I've painted over the frame, but I'll show you as we go along. Now we're going to look at a couple of different techniques. Uh, today, if you can see this area down at the bottom, I've actually used food wrap for that. So this plastic food wrap, um, the, the cheapest one is, uh, is the best one, it has to be quite thin. And so we're just going to use some of that. And we're going to use some salt, uh, sea salt. Uh, with quite a coarse grain for a touch that we're going to use in this area here. So the first thing we're going to look at is our composition and so that you can see this on the video I'm actually going to draw it out a little bit darker pencil than I would usually use. So quite roughly draw your flowers And the important thing to remember with your flowers is there should be an overlap. There's a nice space here. Hope you can see this. Hope it's, it doesn't have to be too regular. Again, make sure they link together. Why? This makes it much easier to paint because if I have a gap through here, then the whole of this area is linked to this bottom area here, much harder to paint. Don't overthink them. Don't make them too regular. Then what you do is you draw on your frame around the outside. Good. Let's move that to one side. If you want, if you'd like to have that drawing, I'll put it on the site as a PDF so you can just uh, print it out and copy it if you want. Otherwise, please draw your own drawing. Move that to one side. And here you can see is one that I've already drawn out on here. Now you might find that some of your lines are a little bit dark and they're going to be white flowers so we don't need them to be too dark. So if you've got your, if your lines are a little bit dark, just erase a few. You'll still be able to see where you're drawing it, but you don't want them to, to be too and I can see, you can see here where I've decided to put my frame. You can see there's a lot more, less space here than there is down here. Good. So uh, the next thing we're going to look at is colour. So I shall move that uh, away. And here are some bits of scrap paper that I'm going to use for colour. And here is the palette. The colours I'm going to use today are uh, um, lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, madder or alizarin, and a new colour is called viridian. Now, viridian is, is quite a violent colour. I'm going to show you the viridian. So a little bit violent and you probably wouldn't use that um, by itself. However, mixed with some of the red, you can see what a fantastic dark 
colour that makes. That's great. And lemon yellow because I want to mix that with the red to make a sort of orangey colour. And the blue and the green will make it's, this is quite a bright uh, composition, it's quite a brightly coloured. And what haven't I done? The red and the blue will make a really nice dark purple. So that's, that's, my, that's the colour scheme, that's what I'm going to use. Now, there's a reason that I've chosen the uh, ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is a blue, you can see it's got quite a lot of red in it already, but ultramarine blue is a non-staining colour. Uh, have a look on the site, you can see a list of staining colours and non-staining colours, and I do want to be able to lift it when it's dry and take it out. So um, I'm just going to mix up the paint and I'll just pause for a moment while I mix the paint. So you can see I've mixed up the four colours and do make sure that uh, your colours are dark enough. They should be at least this colour. You don't want to have something that's really, really pale um, because if you have something really pale, your salt technique won't work and your um, food wrap technique won't work either. So it's white flowers on a dark background, so your background does have to be quite dark. So here, I hope you can see I've got my flowers. And uh, I've also, just a tip, if you have two containers of water, you can actually wash your brush in here and then give it another wash here. It means you, you then have a much better chance of having a clean brush and not transferring your colours around. So I'm going to start with this area here and I'm going to paint upside down. So I'm going to paint fairly quickly because it's important to get the salt on um, while the paint is still wet. Uh, if your paint is dry, your salt technique won't work. I just need to find my salt. Uh, yes. Good, so we start in this section here. I'm going to start with the blue and paint roughly around the flowers. You can see how dark that is. Mix a bit of red in. Paint over the edges. A little bit of yellow. Ooh. Bit dirty. Salt. The salt will um, draw the pigment in, so you'll get a textured effect here. I've got a fantastic effect here, so I'm going to leave that. If you've got an area where you think, oh, that looks good, don't paint over it. Now, um, we have to now leave that to dry. Obviously, we can't use a hairdryer for this, otherwise it's going to blow the salt all over the place. So let's just uh, go around the flower a little bit more carefully. And while it's still wet, and I am going to turn it around the right way around now. What I'm just going to do is with my clean water, and I'm going to keep it flat now, I'm just going to soften up some of these edges. So clean water, and just soften that edge up so it's not quite such a strong edge. 
all down the colour into your flower. So you're already adding a few little shades into your flower. And I'm going to do the same one here. Try to do, have this effect so you have a softened edge, um, more at the edge of your, um, of your flowers. So we want the strong um, difference between the dark colours and the white, more in the middle of your painting. Okay, good. So that's that for that section. So I'm going to now continue on with the section uh, down at the bottom here. Now, uh, we're going to put the, the uh, food wrap on here. So very important is to have the food wrap prepared with the scissors. Always prepare your food wrap before you start painting because you do want it to be... Uh, those scissors don't work. Okay, so we've got a large area of food wrap right here. I hope you can see that. It's prepared before I start painting. I'll put that down there. Then I'm going to start again with my painting around my flowers. So we're going to have the green area here. Got to paint fairly fast. Add some blue. Paint over the edge, some red in the corner to balance out the red we've got here. So you can see it's still quite wet, which is fine. And you take your wrap and you pull it so it's sort of diagonal like this. So we want the stems not to be straight up and down like this, but we want them to be down and drop it on to your painting. You can see I've just put it into the middle of the painting. Uh, you can move it while it's still wet, you can move it around a bit if you wish. Um, if you want, you can add a little bit here, going a slightly different direction. Okay, so now the important thing is we have to leave it to dry. So this could take, depending on the temperature outside, it could take an hour, it could take a couple of hours. So uh, you can arrange them differently if you don't think. But don't do too much arranging once you put it on. So once you put it on, leave it. Okay, and we're going to leave it to dry now and I'll see you later. Good, uh, welcome back. We have uh, dried off the uh, food wrap and the salt now and I want to repeat again, please make sure it's all completely dry before you remove it. If you remove the food wrap before it's dry, um, you won't get, as you can see, I hope, these uh, lines in this area here and if you can see here, the lines that salt of may have made. So you can see these dark spots, all the salt has been removed, well certainly a few tiny bits that I still need to remove and these um, parts here. Good, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the centre to the flowers. So if you remember when we first started we mixed up the red and the green together to get these really dark colours and we're going to do that bit again. So we're going to mix up some red with the green and we're going to paint on 
this area here. Make sure it's all completely wet and then we're going to take one of these uh, sticks. These are the sticks you put your meat on, on your barbecue and you've just drawn out Make sure you're not too regular. Don't go around and make all your, your bits at a regular. And then a few little dots on the outside. Dip your uh, stick into the paint still and put in some dots. So you can see now you've got the start of your flower. It looks much more like a flower there. And we'll do the same on this area. Let's make that a bit bluer. So different lengths, I'm going in from the middle and sweeping out. A few little dots on there, Oop, rather larger than I wanted there. Let's get rid of a few of those. those in a little bit because they're a little bit more than I wanted. I'll just wash that out. You can see that that is ultimately blue and I've managed to get rid of most of it. And the last one. Notice this is not going to be it's going to be that shape. So it looks as if your flower is actually being seen a little bit from the side here. Good. Not unhappy with that one. And while that's drying, we're not going to work on any of this here area. I'll show you the next technique. And at the bottom here where we've got some leaves and some stalks coming down, I want to show you two techniques. And the first one, with your tissue in one hand, just put on water, clean water. So this is actually removing paint from the painting and you can do this with a few of the colours, not all of them. If you've got a colour that stains the paper it's very much more difficult to take it out. If you've got colours like we have here with the um, Viridian and the uh, Ultramarine you can use it to take the paint out of your painting. You may have to do it several times. At the same time, that bit's worked really well. At the same time, I want to add a darker bit round here because I want this flower to be the focal image. So I'm going to add some blue and outline this. That's a bit better than I did originally. A strong line there that we don't want so hope you remember how to get rid of that we use clean water and we just slowly go around the outside so that we've got a softer line and I need to just turn this around and do the same here and while we're here we'll actually In. A step going down, and I think we need a bit more like this one here. Now, 
Notice I haven't changed from my large brush. If you want to change to your smaller brush at this stage. So you can see here now, I've got a nice bit of green that's going into that petal, but I've just outlined the outside bit, so we've got a little bit more definition. And if we go around and do, not going to do all the flowers, but that's a bit weird there. the same. And you can see how your white comes out when we do that. Don't look too far into your um, bit with your salt. Stand back. Look at your painting for a while, see what you can see going on. Uh, when I look at this, okay. come down here and maybe a bit darker, come down here. When I look at my painting, I'm ever so happy with that bright yellow there. I can put a little bit more bright yellow coming in here, so to balance off that yellow. Because we should, in our composition, we shouldn't just have um, colour in one part. So I can balance it off, but I'm still, it's still a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to add... I don't know if this is going to work or not, so let's just add a little bit of green around there on that flower, so that yellow is not quite so dramatic. Is that better or worse? I think that's a bit better. And then the painting is, the petals are a little bit too strong for the edge, so just rudge your, let's take a smaller brush, clean water, smaller brush, and just soften up the edge of those petals so they're not quite, can you see how I'm softening up so they're not quite so strong because they are at the side of the painting, so we don't want them to be too dramatic. So what we do now is we're going to dry off the painting and then I'm going to show you quickly how to put the shadows on the flowers because at the moment the shadows are 2D and we need the shadows to be 3D. So in order before I do that I'm going to dry it completely. So be back in a minute. The last step we're going to do is to put some uh, shadows on the flowers just to make them look a bit 3D and I don't want to do this too dark so if you see these colours I'm painting at the top this is a mixture of the red, the green and the blue and we're going to put a little bit here because that paint, that petal there goes over the top of that one and I'm going to put a little bit here Also goes a little bit over the top of that one, and then that's a bit too dark, so we'll smudge that in. And then we'll add a little bit here. Try not to paint too far over your uh, centres, you don't want to smudge them too much. So I hope you can see now that your uh, flowers look a little bit more three-dimensional with the shadows falling on them um, than they did before. And um, so at this stage in the painting, I hope you can see that I've got a focal point here. So this is where we've got the dark colour next to the white colour of the petals. And if you want to um, just make that even more... Just 
add even more colour there. So the more dark, the more dark colour I add here, the more I will get a contrast with the white, and then that will be what draws the viewer's eye into that area here. So we've got a nice composition. Uh, some things are working well. Um, this is working less well. Let me see if I can take a little bit more of the blue out of here. Yes, you see, um, I got, actually got some, took some of the blue paint out of this area here, and it's probably enough. A bit there. Okay, that looks working well now because we've got a pale bit going into a dark bit. So you haven't got the same colour going through. Not terribly happy with that bit there. Let's paint over some of that. So again, you've got a bit here and then a bit coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that aside and look at it for a couple of days and see if anything else needs doing to it or not. But just before we go, you put your frame around it and that's what we've got. So, good. So we've done several different techniques on this one. We've um, put on the salt. We've put on the food wrap. Uh, we have done the centres and used a pointed stick to, to use the centres. So three different techniques there. We've also removed some of the paint uh, here. Uh, so when people tell you that when you paint with watercolour you can never take the paint away, it's not true. What is true is you have to choose the colour you're going to take away carefully. So you have to choose a colour that is non-staining and a very good colour for that is ultramarine blue. So finish painting please send me any of the finishing paintings you know you'd like to discuss uh, online with me and uh, keep painting and have fun.